series where we've been creating a website from scratch with Python, Django, and the Wagtail CMS. This coding series is part of the Code Buddies community. Code Buddies is a global community of amazing people who help each other become better at software development through conversations on Slack and peer to peer organized study groups and virtual hangouts like this one here. We're working on a magazine website where our source code is available on GitHub, open source. We're working for a nonprofit organization called Western Friend. Western Friend is the official publication of Quakers in the Pacific, North Pacific, and Intermountain Yearly Meetings. It's all in the western half of the United States. And they have been publishing this, uh, the Quakers have been publishing this um, periodical since around 1926. And it's kind of a document of life and times. You can see the current episode here is on separation, which is certainly, well, it's a big theme, and it's certainly causing a lot of problems in our financial system, in our social systems, and around the world. This uh, idea of otherness and being separate from one another and separate from nature. So... Just getting back in the swing of things. Um, we're working on a magazine subscription component so that Western Friend can generate just a little bit of revenue uh, through a subscription model where subscribers get access to the most recent three editions of the magazine. Um, once a new edition is published, the older edition becomes publicly available. So all of the magazine issues, if I go to the magazine section, um, beyond these three recent issues on separation, neighbors, and control. These are all the members only, subscribers only issues. The archive issues goes back, there's many, many, many archive issues going back to 1926, where it was originally called Friends Bulletin. Those are all publicly available. I think it's a pretty decent... Um, uh, so to speak, a business model. This is a nonprofit organization, but it still does need to fund itself. And uh, we're able to develop an open source website to support that initiative, that endeavor. So let's go here to the subscription model. And what Mary and I discussed last time is that... Well, I've got to come down here a little bit further. The subscription model has a series of fields to type a subscription. Hey there, Joker Craft, welcome to the Hangout. Uh, do you have any projects you're working on, Joker Craft? What kind of uh, coding do you like to do? So we have a subscription type, subscription duration. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, so part of what I need to do is add a the end date for the subscription that will be calculated from the duration in the current time, but I'll have to come to that in a moment. What I'm going to work on first, and this is going to be the challenging part, is we have some uh, some information about the subscriber that's associated with the subscription. And specifically, we have these street address fields. Uh, sorry, the more or less the mailing address if, if they're receiving a paper PDF subscription. A paper copy of the subscription instead of a PDF, excuse me. And what Mary and I realized is that we'd like to try moving these address-related fields to, the, to its own um, table and having a foreign key here. Not sure really how beneficial this will be. Well, I'm not, I really don't remember what ends we were trying to meet here. Uh, I think it's sort of a midway between having an, an actual, being like a CRM where you have const constituent or contact uh, relational information, a history of a subscription um, or a subscriber's um, interactions with Western Friend, for example. But in case I'm going to give it a try, I'm just going to go for it and see how things work out. We're in a fresh branch, so if I fail, that is okay. Jokercraft says they're working on a Django Project uh, movie catalog with the ability to suggest movies based on uh, the previously seen. Ah, really cool. Um, are you reading uh, that book, Practical Recommender Systems? Uh, 
have you seen that one, Jokercraft? From Manning Press. I'll actually uh, give an unpaid endorsement for this book because Manning Press is excellent. Uh, all their books are high caliber. Uh, I really have learned a lot, and they continue to publish um, fixes to any errata they find. They keep them up to date. Uh, many months after publication, keep them relevant. And this book specifically is on GitHub. It's called Movie Geek. Put that code over here. I'm checking things out on my second monitor. The Django website used in the book Practical Recommender Systems to illustrate how recommender algorithms can be implemented. Uh, this is fully open source, MIT licensed. So it might be a good one if you're not already using it. Yep, it's a must read. Okay, good. I figured you would be, but it's good to give a shout out for these type of books. I also have been using a book uh, along the way in this project. I'm working on this Django project. Uh, it's unpacked. I've given attribution to it a couple of times. Um, it's Django 2 by example. Oh goodness, with these. What am I? Not signed in or something. I guess Google has changed their terms of service again and again and again. Should be using DuckDuckGo over here. I think it's a lesson I'm learning. I have it enabled by default on my Firefox, but just not Chromium because Google. Django 2 by example. This book is really well written. JokerCraft says they've been implementing pretty similar models to what is in the Practical Recommender Systems repo. If you're also JokerCraft uh, like me, learning um, some of the nuances of Django, uh, this is a great book. And specifically, um, what I like about it is you build real projects. And it's, uh, so it's not so theoretical. Uh, for example, chapter 11. Well, this one, you're building a, an online, an e-learning system. Let me just go to the official PACT website. Again, this is a non-paid endorsement. It's not paid endorsement. I uh, just have gotten value out of this book. Let's see the uh, table of contents real quick. So you build a blog application, a social website, online shop with payments and orders, uh, exporting the orders, PDF invoices, e-learning platform, and then some advanced stuff about APIs and caching. Really good book. I actually have a subscription to their little, it's 10, year, 10, uh, $10 a month or whatever for all their books. I think I also ended up buying this book. Uh, with these half-off sales that they, they have periodically, 50% off books, 80% off even. Anyway, cool. That is not a <laughs> specific endorsement for, for PACT. But um, I will mention just in, for full objectivity that um, my experience, and I've been buying PACT books for a while, and I bought O'Reilly books and Manning books. PACT went through this period of, of kind of poor editorial quality in their books. They would just miss... There would be you know weird grammatical errors, and then just the code wouldn't work, and or sections of code would be left out. Uh, that Django two by example has been a pretty good one. I think there was only one time where there was a section of code that I was missing, but I was able to get that on GitHub. That was missing from the book, but I just checked the GitHub repository for it. Um, so in terms of my favorite publisher, Manning is the number one, uh, and then I. I have a packed subscription, so I guess it's number two for my technical books. O'Reilly, I bought a lot of their books, but then they switched to the subscriber-only model, and I sort of stopped engaging with O'Reilly content. Cool, I got some chai tea. So, Jokercraft, what are you planning on doing with your... Are you going to launch your movie recommender project, do you suppose? By the way, uh, I'll mention a, another project a friend of mine, my colleague at work. Uh, <laughs> oh shoot, what is, what is it called? His name is Marcus, but it was his project called. Recommend.games.
Yeah, this is it. Recommend dot games. Uh, Marcus is my coworker at my day job, and uh, he's also a uh, board game geek and gets has built this. And he's a data science engineer, and so he built this recommendation um, system that takes data from board game geeks database and makes recommendations based on your board game geeks profile, which. Uh, I don't remember if I had actually much of a profile there. And, uh, so I hadn't made any ratings on there. It won't work for my personal user, but the thing is, the reason I bring it up is, here's Marcus, his avatar, and his uh, code is also open source, and if I recall, he's doing pip in. Written in Django, yeah, so might be another resource that you haven't found. Uh, could learn something. And uh, Marcus, again, is a data science engineer. He's really like intelligent, very, um, he's doing some pretty cool stuff. And has certainly helped me learn some, even I'm, I would call rudimentary Python stuff. <laughs> He'll just kind of say, yeah, this is more Pythonic way of writing that code. Okay, let's get back to it. Code buddies. All right, so Jokercraft, do you have any experience with refactoring models? Uh, and particularly moving fields from one model to a second one and then creating a foreign key. Jokercraft says, Still, way to go for this. Uh, still has a ways to go for this project. Plus, uh, still learning Django and machine learning. So it turns out to be something solid. Then, yeah, I would definitely give it a try and publish my project to the end user. Yeah, so it sounds like it's more of like a toy or hobby or kind of a learning project right now. That's cool. No shame in the game. That's certainly a good way to learn. You're actually still doing stuff. I started programming a while back just by reading a uh, book on Python in 2006. It was the Py Dummy's Guide to Python or something like that. It's like 2005, 2006. Uh, yeah, and didn't do anything with it. It took me like 10 years before I actually started, just sat down and started coding. And then I actually learned. Although I'd been just drawn to Python for a while. Yeah, Python for Dummies was the one I had, I think, in 2006, I think it was interesting, and I probably learned a lot about the, uh, you know, the culture. I just didn't have any exposure to programming prior to that, and I, I didn't really grow up programming, although I grew up with computers. So I didn't have a mindset. All right, so, um, well, I've written JavaScript. I have a written a full-stack JavaScript app that's in production now, and I do JavaScript um, a little bit uh, where I work because our our whole back end is written in JavaScript, serverless Lambda functions. So occasionally I'll get into that, uh, but mainly I'm doing Python uh, for data, data wrangling and visualization a little bit. I really prefer Python. And SQL is also good. I also had an aversion to SQL. But now I've kind of come to appreciate it. So I guess we'll go ahead and have, um, have to stop the server for a moment. <laughs> Excuse me. I have the hiccup or something. Could I recommend a way to master Python? Hmm. <laughs> well, I like books <laughs> and courses um, that are holistic, sort of like that'll take you through the big picture and have sort of an integrated learning journey. 
as opposed to you know fragmented YouTube videos or whatever, um, random tutorials, Stack Overflow answers. All those are valuable, and I use Stack Overflow every day for specific problems. But I'll also dig into a book sometimes. So let me just think for a second. YouTube video series, YouTube sent decks. Um, if you're the visually inclined, you probably have encountered this channel in your day-to-day uh, -day perusal and searching of uh, educational resources. Or let me go to playlists real quick. Sentdex um, doesn't seem to do just one-off random videos. He does oftentimes series, video tutorial series. Okay, so Sentdex, yeah, uh, got you into Python. And that, that makes sense because, you know, he does some pretty interesting stuff and is a very good teacher. There's... Um, for mastery, though, you want to get beyond just, like, how it works and you want to get into the point of a craftsmanship. Let me look this up. There's a book on Pact that I've been kind of working through. It's called Clean Code in Python. I think this book will give you, I'll have to just accept all those trackers and stuff. Um, some pretty good code patterns to follow that will make you a strong programmer in any language, any object oriented language typically, but there's probably some other, well, it's some maybe some functional stuff. So yeah, this is a good one. You know, it's on offer right now. Uh, half off you know for the even for half off though the cost of one book uh, the subscriptions worth it I've been uh, they have an app that's pretty it's okay it's decent I've been reading it on the train and stuff um, I think that's a pretty good price point for an online publisher around 10 to 15 dollars a month you know it's like around the Netflix price uh, but what you're getting at it is uh, actually stuff that's gonna improve your knowledge and improve your skills whereas Netflix it seems to be more of a time sink uh, you know, don't get me wrong, I still watch movies and stuff. I've been enjoying, um, well, I just finished the series on uh, Amazon called, uh, gosh, anyway, what the heck was it called? Anyway, yeah, so this is a good one. Let me find another just to stay sort of on topic. Uh, there's this dang Django. Design patterns packed. Design pa patterns and best practices. I'm just looking these things up on my second screen to out of habit, but essentially um, these are relatively recent books. And the cool thing about Django and Python is they're not changing super fast now that Python 3 has been out for <laughs> over 10 years, I guess. Or how long is Yeah, something like that. And... Uh, you know, Django 2 is out, and the API is not... Uh, Django 3 is going to be coming out too, but there's not major API changes. So the code stays relevant. That's the cool thing about using these frameworks. So yeah, if you're particularly a web-oriented de developer, starting with just clean code idioms and principles, following... Uh, you know, writing idiomatic Python code is good. You'll learn that through a book like this. There's other books from other publishers. Uh, I'm just f more familiar with Pact. And um, going the web-oriented route, you'll get some really good Django foundations to take your Django code to the next level. Python 3's been out not 20 years, though. Python 3 was released, like, in 2008. And it just took almost 20 years to... Be for people to adopt it. People are still saying you don't have to use Python 3. And I'm reading people saying uh, Python 3 is almost like a new language, which, I don't know, has some truth to it, I suppose. Uh, but 
at my work, we use only Python 3 and any new project we do in general, any new Python project should be using Python 3. And then, since you're also a Django oriented person, JokerCraft, check out Wagtail. It's really, really a good developer experience. It's built on Django. It's what I'm using for this project. Uh, but what Wagtail does, it's like the WordPress of Django. It gives you this out of the box, really good content management experience uh, with rich text and image cropping and uh, analytics and API for free to build other clients. Uh, it's really easy to get started. And I mean, it's just really elegant. So if you might not have noticed, uh, this is the Wagtail dashboard, so to speak. You customize the menus. It's, I think it's heavily inspired by the WordPress usability. And so right now we're working in a, well, it's not running, but uh, there we go. I'm trying to get a quieter keyboard. I'm sorry for the loudness of this keyboard. We're working on the subscriptions part of the website. So yeah, you just tailor fit the website to the design. Um, I started with WordPress. I used WordPress in, uh, on a few websites for nonprofits. Uh, I will say that I didn't ever get to the point of actually defining my own models in WordPress, uh, but I believe Django and Wagtail give you a lot more flexibility. So let's get back to the code a little bit and see if I can contradict myself here, not necessarily contradict myself, but uh, see if I'm gonna have a little bit of pain I'm just going to copy these fields because we know these are the common address fields we want. I'm going to come to the address model. Anyway, I'll just demonstrate this to people is that a Django model is just whatever fields you tell it. Um, whereas I come from a background in Drupal, and I think WordPress, this is the same, where every model inherits from uh, sort of like a base model. It always has to have a title and some other caveats that were a little bit awkward. Uh, now, in fairness though, Wagtail has this base model called a page, uh, and if you inherit from the Wagtail page uh, model, you get a lot for free. You get slugs and navigation and reverse links and things like that. Uh, but you also have to have a title, which every page has to have a title. So it kind of made that same mistake, but let's see. I'm gonna try just extending the base model. But I believe Wagtail might want me to do something a little bit specific to Wagtail uh, and inherit from this thing called orderable. Okay, that was control shift L to, to multi cursor. So just let me think here. Street address, postal code, PO box number, locality, region, and address. Uh, so the help text is still relating to the subscription. I'll have to take that out. I'm doing this in its own branch to get feedback from Mary so we can decide if this is ultimately something we want to do. We decided, we agreed that it's not practical or realistic for us to try to do our own content, our own constituent relationship management platform, CRM, because that quickly just explodes. And we were using this open source one called Civi CRM, which unfortunately uh, it doesn't have a clean way to integrate into a Django package at the at the moment, Django project. Okay, so let's see for this. I don't think we'll need any views. I'll define that if I need it. I don't think I'll need... I've not been using the Django admin, so delete that one. I 
that's it, street address, postal code, PO box number. Oh, yeah. So I have to add it to the Django apps. Jokercraft, if you don't mind my asking, where in the world are you located? I'm in Finland. So we need to actually go to the base settings and add my address. So here's a problem. I've, I've been mixing singular and plural app names, and I think they should all be plural, to be honest. But uh, in any case, that's my mistake. In Turkey, okay, very... Very cool. Yeah, I'm a little bit, <laughs> well, I don't know if this is an appropriate conversation. I'm a little bit concerned about what's going on in Turkey and Syria right now. You're living in Poland for five years. Okay. We have uh, some of our coworkers are in Poland and actually one of our um, managers who, what is she? She's like our, one of the top executives in our company is from Turkey. I uh, forget what her title is. Yeah, we're a pretty international company. It's pretty cool. Python. So let's migrate these in. Oh, it didn't make, no, it'll make, should find that now. Okay. So let's go ahead and commit these. Five years. So, what did you think of living in Poland versus Turkey? Are you native to either of those countries, or are you just trying out different places to live? Or the operation stopped in Syria now, as the deal with USA and Russia is settled. So now the Russian and Turkish forces are patrolling around the area around northern Syria. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I've been following what. Uh, it's just a kind of a. Uh, powder keg, I think, the, this whole situation in Syria with Russia, and then just generally around there with Iran. And Joe Kraft says, I'm from Turkey, south of Turkey, near Antalya. Antalya. I think you know that city. I don't know how to pronounce it, though. <laughs> Sorry, if I just said it horribly wrong. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's kind of... Uh, oh, really cool. <laughs> nice, thanks. Uh, this whole... <laughs> Well, these late, latest issues of uh, all three of these recent issues in Western Front kind of speak to this whole thing, this situation in Syria, I think, on separation, on neighbors, on control. You know, I think it, a lot of it is Russia and Turkey and the United States uh, to some varying degrees are trying to control that area geopolitically. And from the United States, I'm, in a, I'm a U.S. citizen. I, I live in Finland now um, to be with family, but um, I mean, it was just blatant, like, not hypocrisy, but just um, the motives for the United States being involved there were made blatantly obvious when the United States withdrew, for whatever the motivations are, from the border, to, you know, from supporting the Kurdish allies who we've worked with militarily uh, for many years. This is not the first time the United States has done this. And they withdrew and then stationed the troops in the oil fields. And it's like all these neighbors fighting for control over Syria. And the fundamental problem is that we've lost, we have this, we've lost this connection 
uh, to one another and to, to nature. Um, we see these other countries as separate beings and separate from ourselves. We forget that what we do to others, we do to ourselves. And what we do to nature, we do to ourselves. And, and we've built our entire economy around controlling and exploiting nature, around the petroleum-based fossil fuel economy. And so, I don't know. I hope that we're able to, as a society, transcend this sort of stage of our existence and survive this stage, in fact. So it looks like we've got an address collection. By the way, would if somebody in Syria, uh, sorry, in Turkey, well, wherever, Poland, ordered a magazine or book from the Western Friend Bookstore, would street address, postal code, locality, region, and country be sufficient to get that package delivered to your door? Because I think we're borrowing this from a uh, schema.org. And they have a schema for addresses that I think they put considerable thought into. But then it you know, it's easy to do things in a sort of a Western manner and completely, uh, you know, alienate sort of other cultural or regional customs or ways of doing things. And, you know, I think it's important we standardize things, uh, but not at the cost of sort of and, you know, cultural uh, hom homogeneity. So Jokercraft says, uh, in Turkey, addressing could be cumbersome in certain times. Do you get those types of addresses where you you go to like this landmark and then you go down 100 meters uh, on some, they prefer to mention the local region and then the city name. Ah, okay. So you would put them in a different order, but re um, region, I think locality here is the city name. Mountain View is a city in California. Yeah, you don't have states in in Turkey. That makes sense. In Finland, they do have not states, but they're like bigger regions. Um, I live in a region called Pirkanma, in a city called Tampere, and. Uh, so the Finland address scheme works this way, works well with this. Okay, let's take a look real quick at uh, how Wagtail lets us inline a model. I hope this is just gonna work. Oh man. I'm just gonna have to use this. I'm gonna have to do it. I didn't even speak. Suo me all that good. So I believe this inline panel is used creating a cluster of related objects over a join to a separate model. That's just a list of related links. Uh, it's a powerful but complex feature which takes some space to cover. Inline panels and model clusters. So the thing is I don't, I just want yes to extend from model. Excuse me. Okay, I think this will work then. I hope this will work. What I need to do. So they have an intermediary table there. But of course, postcode, street, and building numbers exist. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's pretty conventional for 
many post services to use those. What I want to do is define a foreign key directly from the subscription model. So let's just delete these fields. Jenga foreign key. Ah, it's just a one to one though. One subscription has one address. So I just want to check the syntax here. Foreign key. I believe I want the cascade. Let me double check here. No, let's try setting null. And then undelete related name. I don't know if I need a related name. I don't think I need that. Let's see, Jokercraft says, why don't you create a slug such that wit, uh, which includes the postcode plus country code as foreign key? Well, I think um, one is that slugs are a little bit challenging to work with. Two, slugs need to be unique. So postcode plus country code, um, you know, most of the people ordering in for Western Friend are probably in California, to be honest. That's where most of the members are. And I'm guessing that at least a couple of them live in the same postcode. So then that would defeat the uniqueness uh, requirement for a slug. The, with a foreign key, with Django models, by default, there's an ID field that's sort of implicit is hidden here. Unless you can override it if you want it to, say, be an, a UUID or something like that. But by default, it's just an, uh, an in, like an integer that auto increments. And when you have a foreign key, I think that's what's essentially stored in the database, though I haven't ever peeked at it. So this will probably work. I just want to see if, if this nullable or cascade is good. Uh, Jokercraft, do you know about this on de on delete? Is it looking at which uh, model gets deleted? Which uh, item, um, the restaurant item here or the place? I think is this cascade going to happen if the re the related place gets deleted? Or the related restaurant is deleted. I can't remember. 
Excuse me. The object containing the phone key gets deleted. So if somehow that address got deleted, and then that would be also deleted. All right. So I said null, and then null has to be true. I think all matching rows and referencing tables get deleted. Yeah, that makes sense. That's one thing I like about the having a mature development framework like Django and Wagtail to a certain extent. Uh, the docs. Things this has got a really great documentation. Okay, and then I need to import my address. So the next thing we need from Wagtail is this inline panel. So once I've got these, hopefully the standard foreign key will just work. I'll need to put an inline panel on the subscription model. So under panels, and I'll need to import this inline panel. What that allows you to do is have an, a model in line with another model on the same form. They, this Wagtail automatically generates your forms for you. You just have to tell it what fields to render. Okay, Wagtail, please work. I'm hoping this works. And uh, it's not running. It's running now. Uh, for example, if I edit this, what happens? Yes. Use a one to one field. Oh, well, that makes sense. What else? One to one field. I didn't read that very closely, did I? I think I just tuned. How do I like Finland? Well, uh, I've been here about six years, and my main thing I was worried about would be the winters, how bad the winters would be. Because uh, we're basically, you know, in Alaska from, <laughs> from my perspective, coming up to the United States, we're in the same parallel. Uh, the winters do get dark and cold and sloshy like when it's not really quite ready to f for the snow to freeze you just get a lot of like slushy muddy puddly water <laughs> but if you can get through that phase and luckily i have a friend here penty who uh, in my first year here said all you have to do to survive the winter basically is just put on layers and uh after that, then the winter's good. Yeah, how are the, the 
winters in Poland. What did you think of those? Uh, so instead of a foreign key, we want a models one to one field. What would I do here? Still, it takes the same primary key equals true. Let's try that. What does that mean? Primary key equals true. Jokercraft says, oh, let's see, um, negative 25 was the record. Okay, was that negative 25 centigrade with the wind chill? Or was that just uh, <laughs> before the wind chill? And they went outside in the negative 25 degree temperatures. Okay, that's a little bit crazy. I don't even do that. <laughs> Unless I have to like run to the grocery store real quick. Uh, in my hometown, we didn't even have snow at all. Yeah, in Turkey, does it? Yeah, so it doesn't snow. Uh, let's see. Yeah, what is what's your hometown? And the average temp in winter is around 15. Oh man, yeah, <laughs> that's nice. So for a guy like me being a negative 25 temperature outside and survive, it means like a big success. Yeah, it makes you more resilient. That's, that's true. Some more chai tea. In Turkey, we have regions where it gets to negative 30 degrees. Okay. Yeah, so good winters there as well. I hope this works. Uh, I'll have to look up this error. If it, if it gives me that same error. Uh, sorry, just got too many tabs open. All right, so this is working. We're good to go here. I'm just going to add a subscription. Yeah, man. Forward one to one descriptor. Has no. Well, this is a similar error going back a few years. By the way, any chance you'd like to get your hands 
And the other side, personal project, please count me in too. Okay, cool, yeah. Um, I do have a couple of um, ideas kind of floating around. I'd like to start a side business, uh, turn a, a personal project into a side business. Um, but it would be open source, the project would be open source. <clears throat> yeah, if you can um, PM me your email, or if you just tell me your, do you have a GitHub username? That would probably be easier, That's since it's not a pr private thing. Yeah. Even if it's not the uh, business related project, I do have um, a couple ideas kicking around we could discuss uh, which one would be cool to try out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you ping me in Slack, I don't hop on the. Are you the, talking the Code Buddy Slack? Yeah. Yeah, I don't hop on the Code Buddy Slack all that often, but I should get in the habit of doing that. I have it on my work. I have a Slack client that I, that I connect to a couple of uh, a couple of networks. So is there something I'm missing here? Is this coming from a different what package? Edit handlers is all it says. So something about the edit handlers. It's trying to render this. I thought in the back of my mind this was not going to go straight forward. It's something specific to Wagtail, this orderable model, I think. Because you see here, they're, they've got this parental key, and they're inheriting from orderable model with a parental key, pointing to the book page model with a related name. Okay, one more moment, I'm going to sign into Stack Overflow and see if I can open a question for this and mute my microphone just a second. Okay, I've got to update my pa uh, my email with Stack Overflow. Apparently, <clears throat> still using my old email.
this feels more like a uh, a bug report to me or a support request and though they ask that support requests go on Stack Overflow. How to use I can go the parental key approach, but I don't want to have an intermediary model. I don't need an orderable. I just need one um, related model, just one address. Ah, uh, uh, let's see. Jokercraft says. Uh, the longest minutes I've, all, I've spent in my life is at the point where I post a question on Stack Overflow and try to go with the best title for a question. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Let me try this though. I, I just... See though, this is assuming an intermediary table. That's not the one. That's not the approach I'd like to take. Either I don't use an inline panel. I don't know what else Wagtail has. I do want to display a model in line. Let me see if there's, if I'm using the right tool for the job here. Inline panels and model clusters. Jingle model cluster module allows for streamlined relation of extra models to a Wagtail page. Oh, well, that's two problems. I'm not using a Wagtail page. For instance, you can create objects related through a foreign key relationship on the fly and save them to a draft revision of a page object. Normally the related objects cluster would need to be created beforehand or asynchronously before linking them to a page. So yeah, this is just trying to save some, uh, save some time. Hmm. I think this is a new question. How to use a foreign key or one-to-one -one field with Wagtail inline panel? Cool, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna ask it. Ready, I've done my research. I'm uh, asking a question that has a definitive answer. I think I'm following the, the procedure so I don't get <laughs> sort of whacked on the hand by the Stack Overflow guardians. Okay.
Yep, that's a good question. Hope it passes the inspection. There it goes. Now, uh, so I think I'm following protocol with Wagtail developers as well, asking that these types of um, questions go through Stack Overflow first before a bug report is filed. I believe this might even be a feature request. Uh, for some reason, I think that the uh, Django admin definitely supports this type of thing. It'll render models in line or sort of let you create one, save it, and then select it because of the asynchronous nature of creating the related, related um, entity, which I believe is why Wagtail has invented this model cluster approach. But I just want a one to one. This is not a, this is like a one to many approach. Maybe they have a one to one example. Otherwise, I'll just have to tell Mary I tried. It just didn't work. Uh, I don't have the kind of um, familiarity with Wagtail and things right now to do it. This relies on this intermediary table and a foreign key. where they're not using the related name, they're using the table name. And I'm also not inheriting from the page model, so it could be just a deal breaker all the way around. Did I mention that in my models model and models model here? Yeah. So that's clear. I don't wanna use the Wagtail page model. This, there should be a conventional way of doing this. All right, see you in a minute, JokerCraft. <laughs> Joker Crash says, get ready for bullying on the stack overflow. Yeah, I think I haven't had too bad of experience with that. I have gotten some how to ask how to ask a question responses. So you need to ask your question this way. And provide details and reproducibility. And it is so hard to provide reproducibility uh, for questions like this. So I hope that context is sufficient here. All right, now we wait. on the answer. Yeah, Jay Admin can do it. Well, I'd like to do it in Wagtail too. to mostly work. Oh my goodness, what is this? Uh, inline self-evaluating. What is it? I, I, F, E. Inline media function evaluation. In any case, what are they doing? So they're setting up some JavaScript to Basically, hmm. but without you know some tricky hacky JavaScript, I don't really want to do that. Quick 
quite easy to extend the inline panel to behave more like a multi-panel. Yeah, and I don't want to use the printer because the address is a child of the mm, subscription in this case. So yeah, 2015 doesn't look like it's going to get traction anytime soon. to replace. Uh, so does the parental many to many field mean that the pa page is the parent and does it have to be a page model to use a parental many to many? Uh, I see the blog category would probably be the parents, so there's multiple blog pastes, posts in a blog category. I don't want this relating key to be in the address. I want it to be in the subscription. So I can't think of a way to, because we're not gonna be editing the address. In this case, this, we're editing the subscription because the, the subscription has the inline panel. And the foreign key. I don't want an intermediate to call up uh, model. But that's the end result, just with only a single instance instead of multiple. Hmm. This is just not going to work. Uh, I think I've hit a dead end, unfortunately. Sometimes this happens, though. Maybe there's a plugin for this. I'm trying this with a wagtail core. Could be that somebody in the community. Has a widget. Create and select related items. Miles model, miles model, <gasps> foreign key. <gasps> oh. September 23rd is. Yeah, it's got a couple of pumps of activity. Mark finger. Pretty good. 
track record, keeping his weekends free of code, apparently. Several organizations from Australia, apparently. Looks good. Mark Finger, cool. I'm getting, uh, I think this is basically what we want. Let me see, is there a picture of it? one there I suppose address and list view so yeah you just add an address that way hmm <laughs> well it's basically how the Django admin works inline creation let's give it a try so much less leverage built by top the work of others, wagtail model chooser, three of them. Competing modules, installation, pip install wagtail instance selector. I'm in a safe environment. So I think we're using pip inf though. Honestly, though, the sometimes I've gotten answers really fast on on Stack Overflow Wagtail questions specifically. So, what do we need here? Just an instance selector panel. Oh, uh, no, the yeah, just the four key for the field. Okay, nice. So, get my imports in order. these things I think wagtail comes above that and then third party and then my project stuff so, so I've got that and I just need the field name let's go back down there and I've already done it I've already done that so Okay, please work. <laughs> We're not running. And let's add one. <gasps> oh, cannot find model admin for class. Oh, okay, okay. That's fair. Enough. That's a very clear error message, and I know what I need to do. But first, I'm just gonna go. Oh, I have a little bit more tea left. All right, we're good to go. I have like one more cup of tea. And I probably need to call it an evening anyway. I do wanna do a little bit of music, modular synthesis, hopefully before the night's over. But it's getting kind of late here, so I might not get to do that. All right, cool. Joker Craft, welcome back. I suppose you would just run manage pi run server while in the environment. No need to type Python. Well, doesn't work. Not sure why. I think I tried that before. And I just, yeah, yeah, it's kind of strange. All right, all right, all right, let's see here. So, what was I doing? I forgot. Uh, register a model with Wagtail's admin. Register an instance selector. I'm not sure what an instance selector is. I know the how to register a model thing. Instance selector. Yeah, I think it's just, well, here's the, uh, ooh, and you can just customize it. Customize it. 
All right, so to do this, we're registering the model, uh, the address model with a wagtail model admin, I'm going to follow the convention so far in this project, which is to create a wagtail hooks pile, which this could easily be also the called the wagtail admin.py, the way I've been using it. So we have this, paste that. Thank you for having such great docs. I've, like that and the model uh, I don't know if I need to prefix that, prefix that with a dot apparently not it's lets me do it Goodness. Oh, by the way, uh, am I using virtual? I'm using pip and which uses a virtual env underneath things. Yes. By the way, Joker Craft, I went to Wagtail, to Awesome Wagtail, just to see if there's some community contrib module because oftentimes I can do things just with Wagtail. In fact, this is the first time I've installed a con contributed module. Um, I can remember. So yeah, Wagtail is very versatile, but certain things it's not designed for yet. So that's how I got here. Nobody's answered my question yet. All right. All right. Uh, so I've got to do this properly anyway. So first, um, the read the docs fully is one thing, but if I come over here, for example, like the hooks, well, I'm in register. Ah, but that's what the decorator's for. I don't know then. Let me try the non decorator approach. Stray. Oh, you know. Both dials. Let's just do that. I can just dot notation. That should work. And then I think this is now unnecessary. So I think this I had this index error in my import. Sometimes these things like to have a restart. And probably don't need to define that in two different ways. Oh, oh. Timbo does not exist. Hey, we're making progress. Let me just do the restart. Yeah, certain changes in Wagtail like registering models with the admin need you to restart the server. Mostly the things just work. All right, so, 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 so. Let's just give it a little bit more detail. Leave this one open and Let's just say, let's 
strangers. Let's put something there. And uh, joke prep says, uh, sort of a plugin for Wagtail. Yeah, Wagtail is extensible. And basically, it's just Python modules, I suppose. You know, I'm just importing uh, a new model, module, a uh, new. Yeah, module. All right, add subscription. Okay, instance selector, instance selector widget display. Hey, I think this is a good error, though. That's why. Oh, makes sense. I have to add it to the installed app. So yeah, it's a Django app. Very cool. And then it'll have the templates. So that's why I can't find it. All right. This is me not reading carefully. I have this problem though. I'm ADD brain. Base settings. And just tendency to skim in general, I think. Oh, okay, I do have an extra plugin installed. Wagtail font, awesome. Nice. Another Wagtail module. Okay, I think this is gonna work now. Just refresh the page, add subscription. Oh, yes. Add address. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, man, this is good stuff. So yeah, I think um, I'm gonna commit these changes and I've got to call it a night on the coding uh, challenge. This was a great breakthrough. Uh, again, I've been able to solve a lot and do quite a lot just with Wagtail core functionality. And then, you know, the, um, not specifically, literally, literally the core, but just what comes with Wagtail out of the box. And only I've had to turn to uh, community extensions a couple of times. Crispy Forms is a nice Django thing. Yeah, it's good stuff. It's nice to leave off on a positive note. Uh, Jokercraft, did you go ahead and ping me on the Slack channel? I'll, I'll follow up with you right off uh, in a moment off stream, and we'll um, uh, see about creating a project together. Let's see pip files. What did I do here? Install. Instant selector. All right, now I gotta check out my models. I've done quite a lot in these models, uh, but particularly in the migration. One to one field should be fine. Oops, wrong button. characters over but I'm gonna do it Thanks, Jokercraft. I'll, uh, I'll log into there in just a moment. So yeah, this has been a continuation of the live coding series, creating a website from scratch with Python, Django, and the Wagtail CMS. We've been uh, building a lot of features, learning a lot about Wagtail and Django in general. Um, the project we're porting over from Drupal is quite large in scope. It's had, um, I think, over five years of uh, development Diminishing development, we kind of got the main things out of the way, um, and now we're in maintenance mode. And we just realized that uh, going forward, we had some significant ma maintenance in order to migrate from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8, and thought it might be a good chance to uh, pivot or re reassess the uh, situation. Uh, and we decided Wagtail was looked like a good way to go forward. So we've worked through bookstore, community library, uh, sorry, multimedia library, community directory, and we're currently on this subscription feature. And this is one of the central features of the website. It cuts through 
the magazine display. Uh, it has a financial component, so we'll be using payment processor and some basic uh, ability to export, um, for example, invoices or CSV export. So it's going to uh, be a number of sessions, uh, at least another few weeks before this one is settled. So thanks for hanging out, JokerCraft. It's been nice to chat with you. Nice to make new friends. Uh, if you're watching this who, uh, on YouTube, do feel free to leave any questions or comments below the video. I try to respond to those as quickly as possible. All the code here is open source on GitHub. Uh, so if you're wanting to adapt any of this to your own projects, you're free to do so. We do have this uh, sort of ethics file, but it's mainly as a guideline uh, of the types of... Um, just to make it explicit and, and give its food for thought about the types of um, purposes we would hope this software would specifically not serve. Some examples of, of what we would think of as unethical behavior, but uh, the main thing is we want to share and uh, not be condemning uh, people. Uh, so yes, there's quite a lot here, and it might be that we break some of these out until they're on standalone packages that could be published later, but I'm just trying to get the main site together. So that was a little bit a long way of saying check out our code and feel free to adapt it to your own needs. This has been another Code Buddies hangout and uh, meeting Jokercraft today, Joker today from the Code Buddies community. It's always good. We have a Slack channel where jo uh, Jokercraft and I are going to follow up after this session. Great. Well, thank you for watching and have a great day.